Hello there, Nathaniel Gavronsky here, and I'm in Rutherford, Tennessee, in the western part of Tennessee. I am at Davy Crockett's uh, last homestead here in Tennessee before he moved off to Texas. Now, Davy Crockett was born on August 17, 1786, and he was really famous within his lifetime. A couple of things, he served in the Creek War, War of 1812, which happened, you know, at the same time. And the really interesting thing about this war is that the British used Native Americans to fight against the Americans in the western part of the country at the time. And a lot, a lot of Indians were also fighting along with the Americans. So Davy Crockett was fighting with the Indians, against the Indians, and in two separate conflicts involving Indians uh, at the same time from, you know, 1812 to 1813. He served as a state legislature uh, here in Tennessee, and he also served a couple of stints in Congress. Now, the interesting thing about his time in Congress is that he fought alongside of Andrew Jackson in the War of 1812, uh, especially when, he, uh, you know, when they're trying to remove uh, the Spanish from Florida after the War of 1812. And so they had a military history together, and then they had a political history together. The entire time of Andrew Jackson and Davy Crockett's time in military and in politics, they were opposition to each other. Davy Crockett viewed Andrew Jackson, who was viewed nationally as the second coming of George Washington and the hero of New Orleans during the War of 1812, and another hero, Davy Crockett, who was seen as this, you know, the king of the frontier, butted heads. See, Crockett felt that Jackson only cared about the rich people, only cared about his donors, which is interesting because he paid off the national debt and shut down the Bank of the United States, which was seen by many as corrupt. But Davy Crockett also saw that the federal government and, you know, by the federal government's choosing and picking of winners and losers at the state level for governors and, and high-ranking officials in states, that the local everyday people were being overly taxed, were being overburdened, and the way the deeds and property rights worked, a lot of people lost their homes no matter how hard they tried, and he and Crockett was really against that. He fought against the overtaxation of the average everyday person. He wanted to see uh, that everyone to be able to, to achieve that American dream before the idea of the American dream really even occurred. I mean, this was during the time of Manifest Destiny, where wild expansion of settlers across the country would happen. People would homestead, and then you'd have people from out east come out and say, nope, this is mine. Here's a deed to this property. This state or territorial governor agrees this is my territory. You must leave. Thank you for building me a cabin. And actually, this, none of this stuff would even really be settled until the Homestead Act uh, shortly after the Civil War in Douglas County, Nebraska, and Pottawatomie County, Iowa where they started deciding you know you know the homesteaders have a right to property this is their property you can't just come and write up a deed and say it's yours so davy crockett was kind of fighting against that before it was really a a huge problem for the federal government davy crockett his entire political career was based on serving the average everyday person who he saw himself as being a member of that of that crowd. He didn't see himself as being a prestigious or prominent member of the Washington, D.C. society, but he did see Jackson soaking up that sun and thought that Jackson was corrupt for doing so. So as far as the, the realities of what each of these men's pride and what they were seeming to do, there's a, there's a personality difference here, obviously, but there are great things in, uh, about Jackson and about Davy Crockett that we can all agree on. And there are some things about Jackson that I think we should be very questionable about, especially Jackson and Crockett's biggest headbutt was the Indian Removal Act. Now, Crockett represented this part of Tennessee. This was the ninth district uh, in Congress for Tennessee. And a lot of Native, Native Americans lived and worked here and Jackson wanted to have them all forcefully removed. This would become known as the Trail of Tears, where hundreds of, of, uh, and thousands of Native Americans died marching to what is now Oklahoma. Uh, this was ordered by Jackson and was followed through by Captain Tipton. And Crockett adamantly opposed it. He voted against it. In fact, he was the only member of the Tennessee delegation to vote against it. Many of the Native Americans, many of which he even fought against, wrote Jackson, uh, wrote 
Crockett thanking him for his vote. Now that would get him his first ouster of, out of Congress, but he would come back a few years later and take his seat back in, in Tennessee's 12th district and still advocate for those same principles of the average everyday person needs to have a voice in Washington and you can't tax them to death. After that uh, last term in Congress, he comes back here and he settles here in 1822. Now this is where he uh, raises his family for several uh, several years. He his mother is actually buried right over here. She was uh, she died in 1884, so she got to to live and see the legacy of her son. You know, several a decade or so after his death. And so this is this was his house, and it's it's been developed. There's a a school right over to my right where they're having a recess right now, which many of you could probably hear. Uh, there's homes, there's modern buildings all around here, but this was Crockett's last, you know, farewell to Tennessee was November 1st, 1835, right here where his youngest child, uh, remembers seeing him, uh, walk off the last time wearing that coon skin cap and that nice rifle and that rugged Frontiers outfit that we all see him in. And he would travel down to Texas, thinking that his family would eventually follow him to Texas, knowing the revolution down there was coming and that Texas would obviously be victorious. He volunteered and set up uh, service to the Texas uh, government and was stationed at the Alamo and would die on the last day of the siege there in the twilight hours of March 6th, 1836, when Santa Ana ordered his men over the walls and to take no quarter. Now, it is controversial on just how Crockett died. Was he killed violently in hand-to-hand -hand combat at the very end? Or was he trying to get non-combatants out of the mission? Was he in the middle of a scouting mission trying to bring reinforcements back in? There's a lot of questions about how he died. Some say he was executed military style after the battle was over, that he was killed during the battle, or he's even killed slightly you know, afterwards in a scouting mission when he was trying to bring reinforcements in. We do know that all the bodies of the Alamo were stacked up and then uh, in a pyre and it set fire the evening and those ashes laid there for some time before Texas authorities were able to, to uh, get to them and give them a proper burial that is not marked. So we, we on, sadly we don't actually know where the remains of Davy Crockett's body lie but his here is a testament to his to his homestead. This is not a very big home for, for what people would, you know, t in t today's standards are considering, but the time period is actually very big uh, for the frontier. And he lived a very comfortable life here and he was, people loved him. He, people came from all, wherever he traveled around to on his way to Texas, people came from all over to meet him. So he was very loved, but he himself, the thing that he would l more likely to be uh, appreciated for was what he did in his legislative work, fighting for the average everyday person, trying to ensure that people had enough to eat, that they weren't being overly taxed, that they had an ability to enjoy the fruits of their own labor. That That is the legacy of Davy Crockett, not coonskin caps. So if, when, if you really want to pay homage and you really want to show respect to, to the legacy of Davy Crockett, speak out, advocate for your fellow American. Uh, he was, Davy Crockett was was not a supporter of the huge donor class and the wealthy elites. He wanted everyone to have a say in their country and that that's what he believed and that's why he joined the Whig party. He thought the Democrats were all about the big donors and the the the, the high society and that the Whigs, which would later become the Republican party, was a, a, a voice for the common man and that was but i think that's what his legacy would be he would want people to, to share and his dedication to the average everyday person and i think that's uh what i think about david crockett that's what i think about so come to ruther uh to come here uh this is a beautiful little community uh in the western part of tennessee uh this house is open from like nine to five you uh make a call to city hall and they will come and let you in, show you around. Uh, the gravesite of his mother is here, so please pay your respects. Uh, but a lot of this is his original house. So be respectful, come and enjoy it. They do ask for donations, and they could, you know, a lot of these properties are expensive to maintain. So thank you very much. I'm on my way out to North Carolina. Uh, we'll see where there's tops I can make. I hope you join me, join me 
at my next couple of videos and I will see you all soon. Thank you very much.